Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Adeze and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you 10 skills that you need to have as a professional housewife, okay? <laughs> I always call myself a professional housewife. As a professional housewife, as a stay-at-home mom, as a dad, as a father, as a human being, as an adult, okay? You need to have all these skills. Now, I'm talking about professional wives or housewives or stay-at-home moms because that is what my channel is basically about, okay? I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I talk about my life as a stay-at-home mom and just carry you guys behind the scenes of some of the things that I do at home with my kids, okay? However, these skills I'm going to be talking about are not just for moms or for women or for uh, wives, okay? These skills are for every single human being who is an adult, okay? In fact, some skills here, you need to learn them even before you become an official or illegal adult. Now, the first skill that you need to have as long as you're going to be having kids, you're going to be an adult, you're going to be living on your own, you're going to just function in this society is cooking, okay? You have to know how to cook, especially if you're going to be a mom. Now, there are cases where you can hire a chef, you can hire a nanny or a cook or whatever. You can, you know, buy food, you can eat out and all of that. However, as a stay-at-home mom, as a mom, it is actually important that you know how to cook and you know how to cook very well and you know how to cater to different types of palates and nutritional needs okay so by saying learn how to cook i don't just mean that you know how to cook what you can eat you should learn how to cook what other people can eat and what your kids can eat and enjoy now do kids enjoy and eat every food that the mother provides for them no however if you happen to have a child that has a special dietary need okay maybe the child is not supposed to take sugar or the child is not supposed to take dairy or not supposed to take nuts and all of that you should be able to you know walk around these things and prepare a delicious meal for the child to also enjoy okay so cooking skills is an adult skill is a human skill it is not particular for moms or women however as a woman it is very very important like other people can get away with it but as a mom it's not really easy to get away with it if you don't have that much money especially when you are a stay-at-home mom okay um and if your husband is not that rich okay because now we know that the society we are in is a very tough one it's very tough for you to have a one income household not talk of when you know you are now not even rich okay so learning how to cook is an important skill that you need to learn if you're still single and you're looking to have kids one day looking to get married and have kids one day then this is a skill that you need to start practicing now there's many people online you can learn from you can learn from foreign channels you can learn from local channels okay by local channels i mean channels that prepare dishes that are local to you okay so if you're a nigerian there's delicious there's ccme there is a um, diary of a kitchen lover I think there are some Instagram pages. There's Daniel Chuko. These are people who give you, oh, there's um, Ify's Kitchen, right? These are people who give you very, very detailed and easy ways of preparing delicious meals. Please just follow them. You don't have any excuse, man or woman. You don't have any excuse to not know how to cook at your big age. Especially as a mom, okay, and as a stay-at-home mom, you should have a food timetable. That is something that has saved me hours and hours of stress okay it has saved me a lot of stress both mental and physical stress okay you should take away the stress of always thinking what are we having for dinner what are we having for lunch eh, eh, i don't bother myself with what are we having for if i ask what are we having for it is because i'm asking someone to tell me what is written on the timetable not that we're trying to decide no it's on the timetable so we know beforehand to bring out stuff from the freezer that's going to aid us cook certain things okay or if the meal is already cooked we know beforehand to bring out this meal so they can thaw and then we can actually warm these meals okay so having a full time table is a non-negotiable for me okay like i don't think i can ever go back to not having one because when i did not have one i was always stressed whenever meal time was coming but now i just sit back relax and i know that you know everything is taken care of now the next one is you need to learn how to clean okay how to do laundry how to use cleaning gadgets how to operate your laundry machine all these things might sound basic it sounds like a no-brainer but i just i let me just let you know that some people don't know how to do these things okay so as an adult as a mom as a stay-at-home mom as a parent as a father as a human being you should know how to clean up after yourself there is nothing as disgusting or as annoying to me especially 
as a person who doesn't know how to clean up after themselves okay so this is something that you should know how to do learn to clean up after yourself know how to clean different types of stains of different types of surfaces learn the different types of things you can use to remove stains everything is not soap and water okay there are some things that you can actually use other things baking soda um vinegar um scoring powder lemon so many things that you can actually use to remove stains from different types of surfaces that don't require soap and water okay because sometimes we try soap and water and it doesn't work and then that stain becomes permanent meanwhile you have baking soda in your house or vinegar or you can go and get vinegar or baking soda that can remove these stains okay not everything has to come in a professional bottle uh, cleaning solution for this now if you can afford those ones and if you can get good ones around you then all well and good okay buy all those stain removers and stuff like that however some of those things don't even work okay you need to actually pay more attention to certain stains to be able to get them off certain surfaces your washing machine has so many settings that many of you don't use and i know this for a fact because i have people in my house that don't use other settings it's only one setting they know 30 minutes wash it's the only thing they know how to wash anything whether it is something that has been severely stained something that is stained with you know serious stains okay or something that's just lightly stained or something that's on this or delicate material you don't just have to carry everything in a pile and put into the washing machine that thing acts me a lot you need to separate colors okay you need to wash whites differently you need to wash colors differently you, you need to wash dark colors differently you need to wash heavy stained things differently so if you have your rags your you know whatever you need to wash them differently okay so yeah, if you are an adult, especially if you are a stay-at-home mom or if you are a mom and you are the one that does these things yourself, you need to learn them. If not, your kids' clothes are going to be slacked from overwashing or not washed enough or are going to have permanent stains or are going to tear, okay? So, these are things that people don't pay attention to but it costs you a lot of money because you're going to keep buying clothes for them or your kids will not just look good in the clothes that they already have. Now, the next one is learn how to drive. This one is actually funny to me because I know some people who never learned how to drive, okay? And they are grown adults. <laughs> they never learned how to drive. It's very, very funny to me. You need to learn how to drive, okay? Especially if you are going to be the primary caregiver to children, okay? Yes, as much as I said that this video is, you know, it can apply to everybody, but I'm being specific with mothers, okay? Or people who are primary caregivers to children. So even if it's a father that is a stay-at-home father, all well and good it applies to you as well okay if you are a primary caregiver to children you need to learn how to drive especially if you are in nigeria where you cannot just call 911 even if it's what you are in a country where you can call 911 you still need to learn how to drive it's not everything that you are going to uber for or you have to get a driver for you might not be able to afford it okay yeah so you need to learn how to drive don't be a passenger princess i am a passenger princess so like if my husband is dead and i prefer him to drive in fact if my friend is there i prefer her to drive right but there are some situations that actually require you to know how to drive okay so please go ahead and learn how to drive in fact the moment you turn 16 you don't have any excuse though. the moment you turn 16 except you guys don't have a car that you can learn with the moment you turn 16 please go and start learning how to drive and the next one is learn how to be organized and plan ahead being organized is not just about you know knowing how to put together a place that looks neat and is not scattered no being organized is also how you structure your life how you structure your activities during the day okay it is of course it is very good for you to learn how to be organized and have a good organized space and organized pantry organized laundry organized you know drawers and stuff like that that one is very very important i actually like things like that however being organized and planning ahead also entails how you you know structure your day so that you don't just wasting so much time doing nothing and then rushing for things that are basic okay like sometimes if you don't plan your day if you don't organize your day you're going to spend the wrong energy on the wrong thing at the wrong time okay you're going to be doing the wrong thing at the wrong time you're going to you know always be in a hurry you're always going to be lacking behind or lagging behind in certain things you're always going to be lacking certain things okay that is why it's very good for you to plan i have a list for everything okay <laughs> if you go to my notes app i have a list for everything i even have printed lists for different things okay i have a printed timetable i have printed lists for packing i have printed list for you know for grocery shopping i have a print i have list for almost everything okay this helps me to stay organized and you know 
I don't just go to the market for the sake of going to market anymore because I know what I need and I know when I need it, okay? There are certain things I don't buy anymore because I have a list. There are certain places I don't go anymore. I know what I'm supposed to be doing during the day at each point in time. So you have to know how to be organized, okay? You have to have reminders. You have to have so many reminders so that you won't be missing your children's immunization, missing your children's doctor's appointments, missing your own appointments. You're going to always see yourself in a state of confusion if you don't plan ahead and organize yourself okay that is one, one of the reasons why many women are overwhelmed at home or many parents are overwhelmed even with their kids because they're not planning you don't have structure you don't have routine you have to have a routine though. my kids have a routine okay me i'm not even particularly have a routine for myself but my kids always have a routine because kids without a routine is a nightmare <laughs> When your kids don't have a routine, that is why you are always overwhelmed because they are not sleeping when they should be sleeping. So when they're supposed to be sleeping, they are awake, they are disturbing, they are cranky, they're not eating when they're supposed to be eating. So whenever you want to give them food, they don't want to eat or they are eating too much or they are eating too, too little, like you have to be organized and have a routine if you are going to be taking care of kids. If you've not had kids, do not say that I did not warn you because I'm doing the Lord's work today. Oh, you guys like this video, okay, to just encourage me to continue doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Learn to save and manage your finances, even if you don't have a job, okay? Even if you're a stay-at-home mom. For me, the arrangement I always advise stay-at-home stay moms to have with their spouses is that if you're going to be a stay-at-home mom, then you should be on a salary, okay? You should have a salary and you should also be giving the money for upkeep, okay? Upkeep of the home. It shouldn't be on a request basis. It shouldn't be on a day-to-day uh, -day basis or when I ask, they give me. No, you should have a certain amount of money that you are giving monthly without fail, okay? Like, if anything else should fail, please, this my money must be complete. Yeah, like even if you want to forget any other thing in this life, you see that my monthly upkeep and you see my own personal upkeep money, don't miss it, okay? So always have that arrangement with your spouse before you become a stay-at-home mom because you don't want a situation where you need something urgently, you have to go and be asking and then at that point, maybe he has finished spending all the money for the month and doesn't have that thing for you. Like, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a question because your job as a stay-at-home mom is a very, very serious job, okay? Like, you should be compensated adequately for it, okay? You should be compensated adequately for it. Like, I'm not saying that, you know, you should be paid as much as people that are going, that have nine to five jobs, okay? If your husband can afford it, then that's fine, okay? That's in fact, fantastic, that's perfect. That's the kind of arrangement I want, okay? I want an arrangement where the money I'm getting monthly at home is even more than what my my mates, okay, are earning in their offices, okay? So if that is your case, then that is all well and good. But if it's not your case, at least you should have money that will cover all your basic needs. All those, uh, uh, when you need part, you gotta ask your husband thing. It shouldn't be a thing if your husband knows what he's doing, okay? It shouldn't be a criticism for stay-at-home moms if your husband knows what... It should be a criticism for husbands that how come a grown man like you, you cannot give your wife what she... Don't, don't you know what she needs monthly? Don't you know that she, she bleeds monthly? Don't you know that she needs to take care of herself, her makeup, her, her skincare, all of that? Don't you know that as a grown man? So that is a criticism for men and not for women saying, eh, so as old as you are, you're asking your husband for money for part. Before uncle, who will I ask? He's not supposed to give me the money. If I'm at home taking care of children taking care of the home who's supposed to give me the money anyway let me not get heated about this one because i always get heated about such conversations but anyway if you have successfully you know gotten that arrangement and you're getting your money as as when due then you should learn how to plan your money next okay now i'm not even the best at this okay so listen to my words not my actions okay i've been a hypocrite right now so yeah whatever <laughs> you know but yeah you need to be able to plan i mean so let's say i actually plan my money because i still save i save monthly you know i mean i save from the money my husband gives me aside what i make from youtube i save money from the money my husband gives me monthly you know i save in the home okay some things i buy them in bulk ahead of time then some things i buy them as at as I went needed, okay, but I even say from the monthly upkeep, you know, my house is never, we're never lacking food, we're never lacking basic things because I have been giving money for these things at the beginning of the month, I have planned myself and I, and I have, you know, done things ahead of time to not lack during the month, okay, so these are skills that you should actually learn as a stay-at-home mom, okay, it's not an excuse that, oh, I did not learn finance i didn't i didn't learn accounting or whatever so i don't know how to manage myself no you don't need to go to school to learn that okay there are so many resources online there's so many youtube channels online that'll teach you how to budget how to manage your finances how to keep record there's so many apps there's money manager if you if you are someone that wants to you know keep track of your spending monthly there's money manager there's so many apps out there so many even just the apps that come with your phone there's a notes app there's a calendar app there is a 
um, you know, all kinds of things on your phone that will remind you of, you know, of certain obligations and how to manage your money, okay? But even as a human being in general, it's not cute having someone who cannot manage their finances, who every time they are borrowing, every time they are begging for money, every time they are having money fights, somebody is dragging their, their wig in public because they are owing them money, you are taking things on credit without paying, like that's something I never, never do. I never take things on credit and not pay like if i buy something from you i'm paying for it immediately if i cannot afford it i'm going to leave it okay now do i borrow money here and there yes i do borrow money here and there but anytime i'm borrowing money from my friend it's not that i don't have money it is that maybe my money is in dollars i don't want to change it yet and i want to and i know my money is coming like in the next four or five days and i go ahead and borrow money but that i'll borrow money that i don't have any any like if i'm borrowing 100k it means i have 100 dollars somewhere in my account i know that if you ask for that money that same day even if i've spent it i can give you back Okay, that is how I operate. My husband self does not borrow at all, as in at all, at all, at all. The maximum my husband can do when it comes to borrowing is me buying things with my money and then him pay, paying me back. That's it. Borrowing money should be done carefully, but the worst to me is buying things on credit and not paying back. And then, you know, they're now disgracing you in public. They are, they are calling your husband. They are, they are sending messages to you. You are, you are borrowing from loan apps and they're sending messages to your father. No, cut your coat according to your size, okay? Cut your coats according to your material whatever it is according yeah according to your material if you don't get material for coats use a massive chafu tie them for hedge okay that's just it if you don't have enough material to sew you a full a full blown ball gown then tie them for head like this beautiful headband i have from number one headband okay um yeah they're on instagram i worked with them one time before and i just bought this one and i just like i loved it and i wore it for this video okay anyway Cut your material according to the style we go, where your material go reach. It's not cute when an adult doesn't know how to manage their finances. It's not something to be laughing about or be joking about. It's not funny. You grow up, you have kids that are coming up, you have kids that are looking up to you. You need to learn how to manage your finances so that you can actually help your children and manage your home as well, okay? Now the next one, this is very, very important for parents in general, but anybody who is taking care of kids, who is a primary caregiver for kids even if you're a secondary caregiver as long as you are you have kids or you're going to be around kids if you're a stay-at-home mom you need to learn life-saving tips okay life-saving you need to learn cpr basically i don't know what to call that emergency health you know i don't know what, what to call it okay but you know maneuvers and stuff like that okay you need to learn cpr you need to learn what to do when a child is choking you need to learn they call it the high high man if i need the name i write on the screen okay the maneuver for when a child is choking okay i have done that that maneuver several times with my children even though my children have never really had like something big stuck in their throat and stuff like that but they've had situations where food went the wrong way or you know they were eating something and the thing like maybe they are leaking in fact i had to ban some certain candies in my house in fact i've banned candies from my house in, in general but you know Sometimes they might be, maybe they got something from school or from a party and they're taking a candy and they mistakenly swallow it with force or something. I've done that, that hitting the child's back, bending the child over and hitting the child's back several times, okay? Um, yes, you need to learn all those things. You need to learn what to do in an emergency. You need to learn what to do if it's a case of a born, okay? When a child, I've thought about this in several times. I've even told my helps about it, okay? If a child gets burnt by hot oil, hot water, hot anything, hot fire, what you have to do first, is to run that child under cold water, run the parts of the whole, if it fell on the child's whole head or it fell on the child's hand or the child's whatever, under running cold water, you need to keep that child there for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Because something, one thing many people don't know is that the fact that hot water burns your skin does not mean that that surface burn is the only burn happening at that time your skin continues to burn for at least 20 minutes after you have come in contact with that hot substance okay whether hot oil hot water uh, uh, open flame uh, candle wax whatever it is your skin continues to burn okay so you need to keep that child under cold water until you get that burn you know the burning sensation leaves it's not comfortable for the child the child is going to be crying going to be shouting it's not comfortable with the child, but the child needs to do that. There are children who had had bones that, you know, would have been, would have not been so bad if they had undergone this thing, okay? So while you're calling for help, you're trying to call 911, you're trying to get who will start the car and rush you to hospital, don't go and put oil on that child. I don't know who taught people about red oil. I don't know who, I don't know where people are learning that nonsense from, okay? 
take that child, put that child under running water and leave the water on the child for a very long time, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes before you now bring the child out and then take the child to the hospital. Okay, now if it's a minor born, like can be born on the hand, born on the legs, minor born, I don't need to go to the hospital. After you have done that, leave the place open, you know, to dry up first before you now go in with your treatments later on. Maybe you can go in with iodine. Me, I normally use aloe vera. Aloe vera is one of those things that help your skin to heal and heal without leaving scarring okay so aloe vera i always have aloe vera in my house in fact i have so many aloe vera plants in my house that it don't turn flower i've turned it to flower okay anyway all this to say that you need to learn different things to do when you have different situations with your children what do you do when your child has been poisoned or has taken a poisonous stuff substance okay when your child drinks so and so thing what do you do Many people say, go and give your child red oil. Many people have died from drinking red oil because you now, the child now aspirates it and then it will now block somewhere or enter the wrong place, okay? So there are different things that you can do aside that regular thing that they told us about putting, uh, using red oil. It, it's, not, it's not red oil for everything. How do you deal with infections? Some people, your child will get infection. Next thing, you're taking antibiotics. Meanwhile, it's a viral infection. Meanwhile, something like your antibiotics cannot cure, okay? How do you deal with recurring infections in your child? How do you bring down their temperature? Not everything is paracetamol. Not everything is profane okay sometimes when your child's temperature is very very high you need to do the um what they call it now take a damp towel put a damp towel under you know um room temperature water not cold water not hot water okay maybe just warm room temperature water by warm i mean room, te room, room temperature okay if you put that towel under it then use that towel to dab the child's body expose the child don't cut, leave the child covered under duvet some people your child is hot because the child is shivering you now put the child under duvet no you're making things worse for the child okay so go and learn all these things okay go and watch videos i'm not a, an expert okay so i can't really say all of them in this, in this in this video but go and look for videos about all these things and learn them don't wait till your child experiences these things before you start learning them with panic and emergency like at that point i don't think you can even learn much okay so go and learn these things when you see videos that talk about you know first aid have a first aid box that has all those basic things that the children need that first aid, aid box you have things like plaster cutting wool ORS, zinc, um, what does my first aid box have? I have their medicine box differently, but I have a first aid box that has, okay, it has paracetamol inside, it has ibuprofen inside in case they hit their head. Okay, not everything is when a child hits head, you can start pressing the head with cold water or pressing the head with warm water. You are making things worse for that child, okay? Some things require cold compress, some things require just, you know, ibuprofen and just leave the child, okay? Not everything must be pressing and pressing and pressing, okay? So, all these things are things you should go and learn. You have to be a doctor. One thing that is evident with being a parent is you are more than just the father of that child or the mother of that child. You are their doctor, you are their, you are their teacher, you are their everything, okay? So how do you manage things like vomiting, stooling, you know, nasal congestion? How do you manage all of some of these things? Not everything straight to hospital, everything straight to hospital, no. There are some things that as a parent you can manage at home first for the first two days and then if it persists, you can now take charge to the hospital, okay? In Nigeria, you can afford to be going to hospital anyhow, but if you are abroad, where health, especially in places like the US, where it's very expensive to call 911 or to rush a child to the hospital, you better go and learn, okay? You, you go and learn. <laughs> you better go and learn. Yeah, because some of, one of the downsides of not learning these things is that things that could have been, you know, helped if you had intervened early, you end up not intervening and then the thing will, will go out of proportion or it will become worse, okay? So have that in mind whenever you, are, you see such videos and you skip. Okay, whenever you see such videos and skip, have it in mind that you could have helped your child, but no, you decided to skip that video and now your child is in trouble. We don't pray for that, but you know, always prepare for it because you are a human being living in this world, okay? Now the next one is learn how to sew, basic sewing, okay? I'm not saying you should go and start learning how to make a shwebi, a, a corset dress, eh, eh. Okay, that's not what we're talking about but you should learn how to sew the basics okay if your child's dress is torn your child's clothes is, is um, the buttons have fallen off you should know how to stitch things with needle and thread okay if you are someone who likes you know you want to know very well hey you can buy a sewing machine you can do more complex things but the basics know how to gayo <laughs> know how to put thread in needle and fix a basic button and fix the hem of your dress and fix you know a tear and fix maybe your child's dress is oversized you should learn how to just do these things by yourself okay now in nigeria you can get away with not knowing those things because i mean it's cheap here you can just call a uh, door door or whatever they call their names and they fix it for you under how many minutes with you know uh, 100 naira 200 naira okay 
However, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're living outside this country, it might not be that easy for you. Even if you're living inside this country, it depends on where you live. Some places you don't just have access to all those um, um, Georgia people, okay? I don't know what they, what's their name. Like mobile tailors, that's what I'll call them, okay? Some places you don't have access to them. And even if you do have access to them, why don't you go and spend money giving someone something that they will not even do well when you can do it yourself, okay? Because the few times I've even given, maybe I was lazy or I was tired or I didn't bring out my sewing machine and I was like, oh, just give it daughter to do this thing for me. No, not even for me, for someone else. And I was like, just give it daughter to do this thing. When they brought it back, I was like, what the hell? I had to now redo it myself, okay? So at the end of the day, you need those basic skills, learn how to just stitch button at least, at least. And always carry these things around with you, okay? Like in my kid's bag, there's a place for small thread and needle and all this. Because you can be on the road now, your child button will just or zip something will happen okay how do you fix this or even for yourself okay so this is actually a human adult you know skill that you should have not just for moms okay like my husband now he always has a sewing kit with him he has even told me to buy him more with more clothes of dress and stuff like that okay there was a day my husband took my children's teddy bears that all of them had torn and he stitched them back up puts their their fiber back and stitched them back up by himself i didn't even tell him to do them okay it's not something I even, I even thought about him doing. Like, I didn't ever consider that he could do it. And when he did it, I was surprised. So, it is a human skin that you need to have. You might not need to use it for anything, but it's good to have, okay? It's not like, it's not a life-saving skill, but it's good to have. Now, the next skill is to learn how to use technology. This is 2023. Okay, you don't have any excuse. Almost everybody and their grandfather has a smartphone, okay? Gone are the days when it was children that used to press phone. Our parents now are pressing phones. So you don't have any excuse not to know how to use basic technology, okay? Like I said before, you have gadgets around your house. You should learn how to use them. It's not everything that you have to call your husband for. It's not everything you have to call your children for. It's not everything you have to call your neighbors for. It's not everything you have to call customer service for, okay? Figure out some things yourself, <laughs> okay? Like, you're not a baby. You're not a child anymore. You're not a... Even if you don't go to school, you're not dumb, okay? That's why it's called a smartphone. You... you you have to just the phone will do, will do most of the work for you but you have to direct the phone on what to do okay so learn how to use your phone learn how to send basic emails how to schedule appointments how to call you know how to book appointments for or how to book things okay how to book flights book hotel like you want to actually if you're a mom okay you want to plan a holiday with your kids you need to learn how to do these things yourself it's not everything that you don't tell your husband to do it might never get done if there's a men that if you leave these things for them to do like people like my husband do if you leave for them to do it will get done sharp sharp okay but people that if, there's, some, there's some men that if you leave these things for them to do it will never get done because they're very busy they have things they're doing that they have bigger things to think about then you're not there telling them eh, nah, help us book a, a hotel room now leave it now i'm not ready to go for that holiday okay Okay. So these are things that you should learn to do by yourself. You don't have to leave them to, for anybody to do for you. And that reason why you need to learn all these things is that you need to know how to avoid being scammed. Okay, you need to learn how to avoid being scammed. Not that way you now try to go and book a hotel and now you now they now scam you or you now book a fake hotel or whatever. Okay, you need to learn how to do these things so that you don't get scammed. So learn how to use your emails. Learn what not to click on. Learn what calls not to to receive or continue with. Learn information that shouldn't go out. Okay learn just be, be 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 tech savvy okay you don't have to be a tech bro but you have to you can be tech savvy okay no matter the level of education that you have you can be tech savvy so as an adult as a grown woman as a grown man as a father as a mother as a stay-at-home mom these are skills that are very 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 important for you okay now the next one is learn basic repairs around the house okay it's not everything that you can be calling carpenter for it's not everything you have to call plumber for it's not everything you have to call painter for it's not everything you have to call electrician for there are some basic repairs around the house that you can repair by yourself okay your fan is having issues can you dismantle your fan and you know fix it and assemble it back i can okay there's many things i know how to do that i don't do because my husband is there so why should i do it okay but do i know how to do it of course yes okay i'm very very um will i say what would i call it now someone that likes to use their hands okay i like to fix things i like to dismantle things and fix it back all my gadgets and issues that are having issues, I fix them back myself, okay? Except for the very, very technical things. I keep my camera right now in sports. I, I can't fix it myself, but there's some basic things you should learn how to do. Open Google, how to fix 
the uh, uh, leaking faucet. It is there, okay? It is there, especially if you're not in a place or if you cannot afford to always have a repairman or a handyman come and do these things for you. And if your husband is not very handy himself, then you should learn how to do these things yourself, okay? Learn how to fix a light bulb. The one that I don't know how to do, Sha, is how to use a drilling machine. And I've told my husband he's going to teach me, okay? All those power tools, how to drill hole, how to, you know, uh, drill, uh, mount things and drill the nail into it. I don't know how to because I have never had to do it myself. Okay, I've never, you know, tried to do it myself. However, I know that if I try to do it myself, maximum one hour I go, I go learn them. Okay, I'm smart like that. <laughs> I'm smart like that. It's not even about being smart, it's about the resources that we have on hand. Open YouTube, open Google, open Instagram, open TikTok. Okay, I'm sure there's somebody somewhere teaching you how to do these things, okay? Put the model of the, of the particular one you have and you learn it, okay? So, I'm not scared of those things even though I know I'm going to have to learn them very soon. I'm not scared of learning them, okay? So, learn how to do minor fixes around the house. Learn how to, you know, chase away pests from your house. I've, I've talked about this one before. Learn how to deal with cockroaches, ants, you know, pests, snakes, wargeko, whatever. Learn all these things because you don't know when you're going to be in that situations where you're going to need those skills and you cannot get someone to come and fix it for you, okay? Yeah, this one is, this is number, will I say, <laughs> this is number, this, I think I've done number nine, right? This, so this is number, 9b or just a bonus point okay if you have kids and you have daughters then you should learn how to make hair okay now for me everybody should learn how to make hair yes whether male female whatever if you're a man learn how to make hair so at least you can help your wife to just weave her hair curls <laughs> but on a more serious note yeah seriously if you can learn how to make it then that's fantastic okay but as a mom if you're going to have daughters okay then you should learn how to make hair it doesn't have to be braids it doesn't have to be one million braids it doesn't have to be you know learning how to you know fix lace front and stuff like that no but at least basic how to use basic you know hair ribbons and make puff puff for your child and you know make basic braids basic twists bas just basic hairstyles for your children you should learn this thing because you don't know what will happen today maybe the salon will not open or the person that makes their hair will call in sick or something might happen and your children will need to go somewhere and you know you don't want them to go looking scruffy then learn how to make your kids hair how to just do basic brush have, have accessories around the house okay like my daughter now that is on low cut her hair is growing now but her hair is still on low cut i have different types of hair bands for her okay if i'm too busy or i'm too lazy to do something fantastic for her i spray water on the hair put leave-in conditioner put oil for the hair to shine and just carry one very pretty hair band and put on the hair and we're good to go and it looks like i put so much effort into it meanwhile nothing even for boys and some boys that you know you want to grow their hair or you want them to have hair how do you style it how do you moisturize it how do you keep it healthy how do you keep it looking fresh looking nice okay these are things that you should learn okay but it's not for everybody at the end of the day if you have the money then go and pay for it <laughs> now the 10th one which should have been my number one to be honest because this is very very important it is learn basic safety measures okay what do you do in a case of a fire what do you do in a case of a fire that comes from pots you know maybe you're, you're frying something and the oil gets burnt and starts flaming up what do you do in such situation what do you do in a in an explosion maybe a gas explosion what do you do what do you do in an electric fire let's say the ac is burning or some electric units is burning what do you do so these are things that you need to learn to be able to give yourself a chance at survival to give your children a chance at survival okay what are those things in your house that pose safety risk for you and your children child proof your house okay child proof your house basic safety measures okay learn how to swim learn teach your children how to swim this one i'm talking about it as a hypocrite now because my children have not actually learned how to swim because i've not had the time to take them to go and learn the time i, I had the time and i was ready to pay somebody to teach them that was when rain started falling all the time in Port Harcourt, you know, so, so I'm giving myself excuses, but you know, you need to learn how to swim, learn, teach your children, teach your children how to swim, but even aside that, just go around your house and look for what might pose a safety risk to your children and then remove those things, okay? Not just to your children, but to yourself, okay? So, 
Uh, what do you do when there's smoke? When everywhere there's smoke everywhere, what do you do? What do you do if you find yourself in a burning building? How do you detect gas leaks? Okay, how do you detect gas leaks? How do you detect? Do you have a smoke alarm? Do you have a gas leak detector? Where do you put your sharp objects? For instance, when people carry their sharp objects and put where the, ch the children have access to, okay, so where do you put sharp objects? Where do you put heavy objects that can fall? Um, you know, there's so many things that you need to be safety conscious about, okay? Who goes to open the door? How do you open the door when somebody rings the bell? How do you have cameras in your house? Do you have, you know, CCTV? Can you actually, when you bring people into your house, in, like a nanny or a, uh, a house help or whatever, what are those things that you're supposed to look out for to be at least try and, and and give yourself a chance at survival okay now i must you can never be too careful bad things will always happen to people not me in jesus name okay but bad things will always happen to people you know it is part of life it is part of you know existing as a human being however let it not be something that you cost with your own hands okay it's something i always say yes people i i you, you should trust people you should you know you should trust people with respect and all of that however i'm going to always treat people with a level of suspicion no matter how close you are to me i'm always going to treat people with a level of suspicion because let's not be that i use my hand to do what is doing me or to allow what is doing me okay so make sure you have so many safety like if bad things want to happen to you let it be that you could not stop it you could not prevent it let it not be that Amrabas came to your house and just walked through the front door because the front door was left open and your room was left open, your safe was left open and they did things. No, let it not be that. Let it be that they had to break through the wall and, you know, use their power tools to drill through the burglary proof. Let, let it be that. Okay, let it not be that they just opened your door. Your door was wide open. They just walked walk out in. No, let it not be that. Okay, so that is always what I always tell people that when I'm saying be safety conscious, I'm not saying that you can always prevent 100% of the bad things that can happen to you. No, but let it be be that if bad thing wants to happen to me let let it sweat let it not happen just just like that okay let's let fire not burn in my house because i did not you know detect a gas leak that i could have easily detected okay let it be that something went and punctured the i don't know <laughs> i don't know but you guys get my point okay so always be safety conscious i've seen people who are not safety conscious and by being safety conscious it's not just with you know things it's with people as well i've seen people who are not safety conscious you just allow anybody come into your house and, and sleep over you yeah, allow anybody coming to your house and you know, hey, there's this uncle that he, he is traveling to you, but he needs to pass through Lagos. Let him come and sleep in my house for two nights. <laughs> no, I'm going to extreme cases, but I know what I'm talking about, okay? You always be safety conscious of who you bring in and around you. Once you start seeing signs that something is off, don't just lose guard, okay? Now, the fact that you saw signs doesn't mean that you change the percent of your house, okay? Because at the end of the day, if you are very, if you are too safety conscious, you are going to actually be putting yourself in jeopardy because your house will not be train station people will be coming and going anyhow you know people will be coming and going out of your life anyhow you will still put yourself in jeopardy okay so i'm not saying that once you suspect somebody the person should be out of your house no but i'm saying that there should be a level of risk that you should be willing to take you know when it comes to people okay it's not all risk that you should be willing to take when it comes to people or managing people or managing helps or stuff like that or managing stuff around your house okay so once they are for instance somebody shows you signs that they're not happy eh, you can manage that person but when they show you signs that they are maltreating your child when, without your knowledge then that person should not be in your house okay even if you don't have proof about it as long as you have that very strong feeling that this person is maltreating your child then you should not be there negotiating words like the person should be out of your house okay so these are the safety things that i'm talking about like you have to be safety conscious it's not every information that comes to your head that you should give out okay it's not everything about yourself that you should be telling people most kidnap cases most ransom cases are inside jobs that is it about today's video those are the 10 skills i feel that you need to have as an adult but especially as a stay-at-home mom to help you have your stay-at-home career your professional housewife career to be able to do it you know seamlessly at home these are some of the skills that you should have and you know you don't have to wait till you're a mom to get them you don't have to wait till you are a parent to get them as a single young adult these are things that you can start learning now so that when you have your kids it's just smooth sailing you're not you know that learning curve you've already passed it you don't have to now start trying to learn when you have a child that's crying in front of you and now learning how to feed your children no <laughs> okay so let me know in the comment section if there are any skills or safety measures or you know anything i talked about okay that you want to add let me know in the comment section if there's anything you don't agree with as well just let me know in the comment section and i would love to read your comments okay thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys